I cannot believe this just happened. Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope you are all having a fantastic day. And I certainly hope that you are having a better day than I've had so far here in the fish room. My day started out bad and just got progressively worse. And let me explain why. I was expecting an order of fish to deliver today. Sadly, it never arrived, but there's more. So this morning I had scheduled time off from work so I could be here when my shipment of fish arrived. I've been waiting for these fish for quite a while. They've been paid for for quite a while. And I had confirmed with the shipper and the seller as recently as uh, I think it was four or five days ago that my fish order would be shipping out on Monday the 9th for delivery first thing Tuesday the 10th in the morning. And as recently as four or five days ago, yes, everything was still looking real good. Well, late last night, getting ready to go to bed, I get an email, and it's from the shipper. And he mentioned that he apologized, but my fish order would be a little bit delayed because he had oversold his inventory, and my shipment was going to have to wait until he received his next import order. And then once he receives his next import order, which is scheduled to come in in about a week, He's going to put the fish through a couple of week uh, quarantine process, make sure that they're, they're clean, healthy, everybody's eating. And, you know, that's fine with me. Uh, I just wish he would have communicated that sooner than the night before I'm expecting the fish to arrive. Not a big deal. It is what it is. So I've got the morning off and decided that I would make a new video on an item that I picked up over the weekend. So let me uh, go over to the bench here and let me show you what that is. Okay, what I picked up over the weekend is called the Watchdog Water Alarm. And this little device is designed to be placed around, you know, the appliances that use water, like your dishwasher, your, you know, uh, refrigerator, washing machine, and around your indoor plumbing like your sinks and your toilets, showers, etc. So if there's a leak and there's water on the floor, you're going to be notified just like you would from a smoke detector if there's a fire in your house. This is the unit itself, pretty compact, runs off of a 9 volt battery. On the bottom of the unit it has these two sensors. When these two sensors come in contact with water and the circuit between the two sensors is completed, it goes off it makes a really high loud annoying sound like a smoke detector would and lets you know that there's there's water i've been looking for something like this for a long time or thinking about designing something like this on my own for a long time never knew this product existed i forget where i saw it over the weekend ran to home depot picked one up twelve dollars twelve dollars so let me tell you why I wanted one of these and why I originally ha uh, picked one up. So the reason I picked this item up is because twice in the past month now I have overfilled tanks while doing my water changes. I've gotten distracted, I took my eyes off the tank I was doing the water change on only to realize too late that I was doing a water change and I've got water overflowing. Now back here in the fish room, it's not a big deal. I have a concrete floor, I have a floor drain back here. Not a big deal. It's just more annoying than anything because it does make a mess on the stand or the rack. It does make messes on the tanks that are beneath them if it's one of these tanks on the upper racks. So I thought something like this would be perfect for the fish room for when I'm doing the water changes. And let me show you how that comes into play. So on the bottom of the water alarm here, these sensors detach and it's connected by about a six foot lead here. So when I'm doing my water change and uh, I've got this on the side of my, my rack here, I can take the lead out. And again, it's about six feet long, long enough that I can reach the bottom tank, the middle tank and the top tank and the same holds true for when I'm doing water changes on this rack. I hang the unit on the side over here and that lead is long enough to reach any of the six tanks over here on the uh, fish rack. So when I'm doing the water changes, all you need to do is simply just hang this over the side of the aquarium 
so that it's inside the tank and about where you want your water line to be, slightly below that. So I let it hang just underneath the black rim when I'm doing my water change. And that way, if I'm getting, if I get distracted, I'm filling up the tank and as that water level comes up, if I'm not back paying attention, this is gonna go off and it's gonna notify me that my tank's getting full and I need to get back to business to avert flooding the floor, flooding the tank, overfilling it. Okay, great. Works perfect for that. Now, when I was at Home Depot, I thought I was gonna get two of these. I had two of them in my cart and at the last minute, I put one back. I figured I would have one here in the fish room and I would put the other one in the cabinet of my 120 gallon tank out in the rec room because there have been two cases where my sump uh, has failed and water ended up in the cabinet. Those issues were resolved and I figured I didn't need one of these for my 120 gallon because there's no possible way that I would ever have an issue with that sump, sump system ever again. Oh, the irony. So since I had the morning off from work, I decided that I would do a water change on the 120 gallon out in the rec room. I was supposed to be doing maintenance on that tank this past weekend, but I got distracted with building this stand over the past weekend. This is my fry rack and grow out rack that I'm gonna have two 20 longs and a 29 gallon still to be acquired. But I spent a lot of my time on this, time got away from me, and I didn't get the maintenance done on the 120 gallon. Well, over here at the water change station, I had a 45 gallon barrel full of water ready to go. I had another 35 gallon barrel with water ready to go, temperatures up to the right temp. They were ready to go into the 120 gallon for a massive water change. I've got 120 gallons in the tank. In my sump system, I run about 25 gallons, about 145 gallons all up. So I've got 80 gallons back here ready to go. I'm gonna be doing roughly just over a 50% water change, maybe 55, 60% water change, okay? Great. So I've got everything going. I've got a pump in this uh, reservoir here. That pumps water into here. I've got a pump in here that pumps straight directly out to the 120 gallon. I have a bulkhead in the sump system with a drain that comes back to my floor drain. Works flawlessly. So I kick the switch on, water's flowing out to the 120, water's coming back here into the floor drain, everything's good. Here's where the day gets crappy. I come out here into the rec room, I turn the corner, and I notice my floor is soaking wet. My sump failed for the third time. And how ironic, had I purchased a second water alarm just two days ago, I would have averted the entire catastrophe. So let me tell you a little bit more about what happened. So here's quickly how my sump works. I have two overflow boxes in the 120. This is a dual, this is a single. The dual overflow comes down into the bio tower. The single comes down here into that filter sock. The, two, uh, the dual water flow uh, comes down into the bio tower, goes through a pre-filter over the, uh, the filter material here, through a submerged part, through the pond matrix, comes up through this coarse sponge here, then it goes down through a fine sponge, some filter floss, and a carbon pad. This is a much finer filter material over here. The water then flows through here into this chamber over here. Uh, this chamber and this chamber, these are two separate uh, tanks, as you can see, and they're connected through two two-inch bulkheads. But water flows unrestricted from here over to here, goes through this big foam block into the return reservoir where I have a pump, and there's the uh, bulkhead with the drain uh, going back to the floor drain. So what happened was this chamber here was breached. I never in a million years expected this issue, but the filter floss and everything that I had over here got so dirty and so clogged up that it wasn't allowing water to pass through here faster than water was being pumped into the system. I never imagined that would happen. But this sure enough was up to the top and water was breaching over the side. Oh boy. So anyways, I have about an inch of water in the stand. 
there was at least an inch of water standing in my stand. I had at least 10 gallons of water on the floor. I quickly shut the system down. I killed the water flow. I get the carpet machine out. I'm sucking up the water. What a mess. Had I made time to do the maintenance this past weekend, this never would have happened. Had I bought one of those watchdog water alarms and just simply stood it up in my stand, which I had planned to do, this wouldn't have happened. I thought my system was fail safe. Now, this is not a manufactured sump system. This is a 100% DIY, self-made, self-designed sump system through a bunch of oddball parts that I picked up from an LFS that closed and went out of business about five years ago. I pieced this all together, threw in some extra baffles. This tower didn't match this system. The drip tray didn't match the tower, but nonetheless, it got pieced together and it works great. I missed one small thing, one small design flaw. I never foresaw this becoming so clogged that it would cause the water level to breach the sides here, which it did. So all I need to do is take a hole saw, punch a hole through the top of this bulkhead here. So if this ever gets clogged, water will flow from this section into this section unrestricted. Same thing over here. If this big filter block or foam block ever got so clogged that it would cause water to breach the side, I just need to punch a hole saw through this baffle here at the top. So again, water will flow unrestricted. That way those two holes will allow a fail safe just in case. Now you can see this foam block hasn't been serviced in a while. I usually do maintenance on this tank and replace the media like once every two to three weeks. Sometimes I go a month uh, and it's been a while since I last took this, uh, taken this foam block out. And you can see it, the water level's off about uh, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch. So this thing would really have to get gunked up pretty bad for it to, to rise this high. But anyways, um, that's the solution. But the irony that I was just looking at one of those alarms to put in the tank and I was too cheap and I was too proud to spend another 12 bucks to give me a device that would have saved me from that mess. So lesson learned. So needless to say, I will be heading back to Home Depot. I will be picking up another one of these watchdog water alarms. I will be placing one inside the cabinet underneath my 120 next to the sump. And that way I have a little more peace of mind for 12 bucks. These can also be found on Amazon as well for 12 bucks, but great little device. I can see where this could come in handy in anybody's fish room. And um, you know, if you're not aware of this product, hopefully you are now, and maybe it's something you might wanna consider as well. It's not all doom and gloom back here though. We still have some good things happening. I'm still waiting for that shipment of fish to come in, but I'm super excited. And I know once they're here, they're going to be great. One of my top three all-time favorite fish. And uh, I'm really excited to add them. And once I get them here, uh, I will be doing an unboxing. It could be a blessing in disguise because I have a new piece of driftwood coming for this 40 long down here. And that's going to be here in two days. It's going to be delivered on Thursday and it is a beautiful piece and I got it for a steal on eBay for five bucks. You're not going to believe how beautiful that piece is for five bucks, but that's going down here. And, uh, you know, otherwise, like I said, it's not all doom and gloom. The zebra plecos up here are doing fantastic over here over the weekend. I did find more ocelotus fry. Uh, there were at least Five of them, two of them were in a shell back here that I got out and put in the breeder box. There were three more down around in here. Those disappeared, those got eaten. The Ocelotus Fry are already pre-sold. I have a couple of individuals in the local market that each want some, so these are all sold. I think there's a total of about 20 in here, which is why I'm gonna pull out any Ocelotus Fry that I find. Uh, I've got other people inquiring and one of my LFSs wants to buy some as well. So I need to maximize survival rate. I will continue to pull fry as fast as these guys produce them. Because I want to buy more zebra plecos with the money I sell from uh, those fry. Um, otherwise, everything else is going good. The Blue Dreams are doing fantastic. I have a bunch of buried, uh, uh, what are these, Bloody Marys up here, or in this tank here. Uh, I have some buried tangerine tigers back there. There's one of them right there. I think there's three females in here that are buried up. And of course the yellow golden back neos are always doing great. So a lot to be thankful for, a lot of good stuff happening, even though we had that mishap today 
and uh, my fish order didn't arrive. That will come in a few weeks and carpet's dry. So anyways, I'm gonna let you go. I gotta head to Home Depot. I gotta get that floor, finish cleaning that up before the wife gets home. I appreciate everybody watching my videos. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Hit the thumbs up button, put any comments or questions down below. I gotta fly folks. Until the next one, we'll catch you all later.